Now, let's get on to our next topic. <laughs> and Logan gave me some insights to this a long time ago when we first started watching The Mandalorian. Gina Carano has been let go of the Mandalorian series and the spinoff, which was going to take place, hmm. she was going to be a part of a spinoff. No more. Bye bye. That's all she wrote. Um, quick uh, reason why, apparently, and, and Logan can give a little more detail. I wasn't aware of this at first, but she's been saying some controversial things on the interwebs. And, you know, um, rule number one of the interweb is sometimes you can just shut up. You don't have to say everything that's in your head. You don't have to. You can. Don't have to. And she was sharing her thoughts, which in and of itself is not a crime. But some of the thoughts she was sharing, this one in particular, was I, I would probably agree well beyond what Disney wants in their, in their um, employment. And uh, uh, I, I don't want to repeat it. Maybe if you, know, you guys want to repeat what she said, but let's just say i think i think it was inappropriate we can all probably agree it was inappropriate but that being said and we talked about this before with shia labeouf and his issues with um not so much social media but just as being a human in general and his relationships um logan what are your thoughts on this you told me this was coming and uh, uh yeah, did, you, did you make I mean, a this... phone call is that what happened <laughs> no no, I have no direct responsibility for this one um, or any of them, frankly. They could have watched your um, show and you never know. They could have watched and said, hey, wait a second. What did Logan say? Well, if that's the case, um, you know, I'm looking for a job. So uh, let me know. <laughs> no. Um, I mean, the what, what is it? The Internet is, is forever. Um, it is in it. You can't. It, it's not. So much of a platform, either in real life, you know, face to face, or especially a more anonymized, a more safe feeling one, where you can just put something out there and you don't get the immediate reaction. People have time to kind of simmer and read and do stuff and, and just kind of think about it. I mean, you, my father used to tell me it's not what you say it's what the other person hears um though in this case sometimes you just say really stupid stuff um and things that are just unconscionable in in every way and there are topics that you know if especially if you're not immediately involved or a part of them uh just shut your mouth and and just know enough to to listen to listen, to, to learn, to support, to, you know, strengthen in quiet, um, not to mouth off or, or spout off or, or, you know, so many different things. Um, but yeah, with some of the posts and stuff that she had put in the last couple months and then the, the latest one um, now, um, I mean, they seem to indicate it in some of the news reports I read and I'm not surprised, but you know, they were kind of looking for one more, you know, really big reason to to just wash their hands of it. And she gave it to them on a silver platter. Yeah, it's, it's, yes. And I love that expression um, that your father said. I'm going to use that. That actually is pretty, pretty poignant. It's not what you say, it's what they hear. And uh, I, 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 I'm going to get a t-shirt, but it literally says that. Um, um, Brianna. Your thoughts. First of all, have you been uh, aware of Gina Carano's uh, internet habits? And, yeah. and your thoughts? Yeah, I've definitely heard kind of stuff as it has happened over the last couple of months. And obviously, like it was everywhere in the news as soon as it happened. And it was like not even a, you know, sometimes they'll do a courtesy, like, you know, we just don't want to comment on it. But that was pretty final. Like she is not employed by us. Her talent agency even fired her like it's a big deal yeah. but um it was definitely a series of escalating things and like obviously you can kind of read the news and see what her beliefs are and she's very much in the minority when it comes to Hollywood in particular but it's all in like what she said and how she said it and like when you have that 
huge of an audience and an impact, like you have to be so careful. But of course, like for Disney, like you're representing them, whether you want to or not, like you are. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I, and I think it just makes a lot of people uncomfortable. It puts Disney in a weird spot. And then like being on set, like, I don't know how she treats other people on set. Like that sounds pretty terrible. <laughs> Some of the things that she said. So, and, I mean, I don't think they were wrong in doing that. And, and just to give a little context, um, Disney was the actual Walt Disney was not the most fair-minded or embracing of different cultures and religions. Um, I think Disney in the past 10, 15 years, maybe no, 20 years, has done a considerable job on rebranding and showing inclusion. And I think the last thing they want is somebody on their payroll who um, spouts off with comments like that. And, and again, I don't want to, let me put it this way. In, in this society where we can have instant communication and literally anything that I think I can put in front of millions of eyes like that, it's such a responsibility that comes with that. And I think that's one of the problems that um, a lot of people have these days is we're, we're so in love with the idea of being right because what we believe is what we believe that we we don't pause to think like Logan said, what other people are hearing. And I also think that in this current environment, when people think they're right and they feel that they're being put upon or they're fighting the good fight, that they can start throwing out analogies that make zero sense because everything that's a, uh, a fruit from that poison tree of I'm right and everything I say to back up what I'm right is, is justifiable. No, everything you say and do to justify your beliefs is not right. And it's never been that way. It is not that way. It will never be that way. But because we're in a society in which it's always us against them. And obviously in her post, she feels very put upon with the liberal left Hollywood machine that you know she's just expressing her freedom of speech. You can, well, first of all, not to go into you know civics 101 because we were talking a little earlier about how America does not teach civics. It just says slogans and then everybody goes to a rally. Freedom of speech is when you can say something and the government doesn't come and throw you in jail. It has absolutely zero to do with your employment or the reaction of the general public. So I can say something and get punched in the mouth. And then, and then when I say, well, I had freedom of speech, no, you didn't. What, what people really want are freedom of responsibility. They wanna be able to say what they wanna say without mm -hmm. any of the repercussions. So I think, um, you know, metaphorically, Gina Carano got that punch in the face for saying something over the interwebs. Um, Kenny, what are your thoughts? And you know, again, I didn't want to go too heavy, but I definitely have thoughts on this whole uh, cancel culture versus just personal responsibility. But but Kenny, please. Go I actually speak. think this is a good topic. Just just like when we did the, the Shia LaBeouf discussion, right? I think there are going to be more and more of them. <laughs> I, have, I have multiple thoughts. On I've them. already got one for next week. Just wait. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I have multiple thoughts on this. Um, so I'll try not to, to go too far, too deep. Um, but one is just like you said, freedom of speech is not freedom of consequences, right? And, and our freedom of speech is, is to protect us from um, the government, not from each other, not from private business, you know, things like that. So with that, <clears throat> when you're employed, you're a representative of that of that organization, whether you think so or not. And, and as a veteran, that was something they drilled into us all the time in the military. When you're when you're in the military and you're serving, you are on the clock 24 seven. So whatever you do, when you're not at when you're not like at work, like when you're not on base and you're, you're home, you know, you're, you're done for the day. If you choose to go out and act a fool and do something stupid, you get in trouble and you don't just get in trouble. Like if you go out and you get drunk per se, and you start a big fight and destroy property, you know, get, you know, have a huge bar fight and destroy, you're going to face the, the civilian consequences like fines and you're, you, 
but you're going to you're also going to face military consequences right so people forget you know when you're employed somewhere you are a representative the difference is 20 years ago when the internet wasn't as huge as it, as it is now and we didn't have the plat the social media platforms like we do now you that, that's why you didn't hear about it but even 20, 30, 40 years ago, the same principles applied. If you worked for a company and you went out and you did something that brought that company like bad publicity, they would terminate you. There's no questions asked. Like there's no difference. So she was employed by a, an organization. They did not like her attitude. They did not like the statements that she was making. They did not want that to be associated with their organization so they removed her that's that is their right as a as a business and the on the counter side of that is you have like i guess you could say the cancel culture which are like oh we don't like that they did that so we're now going to boycott you know we're going to boycott disney okay <laughs> Just, just FYI, they're not boycotting Disney. No. What else are they going to do in Florida? Watch football? No, it's uh, not even that. It, if people boycott, if people boycotted everything that they say they're going to boycott, they wouldn't have anything. They would literally be a hermit. Well, there are only six companies that control everything in the world anyway, so exactly. you've only got so many choices. Yeah, yeah. I, but, I'm boycotting um, um, Star Wars, and I'm just going to watch Marvel. That'll show them. I also think that you know it goes. It also shows that um, I'll, I'll use something I, I said with, when we were talking about Shia LaBeouf is that we tend to put like our people we, we you know look up to our idols and celebrities um, on these pedestals and then we learn that there's just not such good sides to them and then our views change and um, and there's also like so much of celebrity is like what they want you to see. Like yeah. very rare do you actually know that person. Like yeah. some do, some really are like and they're very genuine and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, it's it's a dangerous rabbit hole. <laughs> even even reality shows are not reality. It is oh, it, it's absolutely not. It's a it's a persona. It's it's a the mask you wear when the cameras are rolling. And and to that point, uh I am very sure that Disney has a clause in their contracts that says any social media postings or public comments, um, you know, need to fall within a certain, uh, you know, what what's the um, Brianna? What do what do you sign? You know, some sort NDAs. Of, I don't know how that works. Like, at, like well, not, not, an, not an NDA, but, but you know, like a um, uh, they they have them on, on a lot of you know. Uh, things where you're facing the public or like when you're on a football team and you have to, uh, yeah, you can't get caught, you know, licking it's, codes it's, and running into yeah, the standard, it's just standards of conduct. Yeah, right. yeah, standard, yeah, exactly. Um, so it, it's not like, she, unless she just didn't care. And again, right. uh, I, I really look forward to seeing her in kickboxer 12. If, if that's her decision where she doesn't want to <laughs> be in one of the hottest shows ever and, and literally sabotaged her efforts to be in a spinoff that again, because uh, Logan will tell you, I was rooting for her. I was like, um, because I only knew her from her MMA. And, but, but, you know, I was like, I liked, you know, the, the, uh, just the drive in her. And I was like, yeah, I really want her to succeed. I, I was critical about her acting. And then Logan dropped a truth bomb on me saying, oh yeah, check out this thing called the internet. <laughs> but, you know, I'll say like to, to what you want, something you said when you were, you were talking about it, uh, Julian, is when people start making comparisons and analogies to things that just don't make sense. Um, so I, I read, you know, one of the things that she wrote and she literally compared political views to a religion. And I'm, I'm not a religious person, but I understand the difference between a political view and a religion. And to sh and to put those on the same at the same level, on the same platform, blows my mind. Like they're they're not the same. And if you're saying they are, then maybe that's part of the problem in our society. Well, I... we've, we've taken our political views, and now we've elevated them to the to a religious standpoint, where we're no longer 
looking at our economic values, you know, and our, our country value, you know, our, 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 you know, citizen values, but we're looking at our religious value, you know, and it's, and it's, well, and, and to be fair, Kenny, even if it was a religious value, it's not a consistent religious value. I think what it is, is, and you hit the nail on the head, if you're comparing your political views with your religious views, odds are you don't understand either one of them. Because, you know, um, whatever your religion is, that doesn't mean that you just stop thinking, you know, and the same for whatever your political party is, you know, you still have to think. But yeah. like, like I was saying probably earlier on, um, most people that are, and again, I'm not trying to, you know, turn this into the um, Bill Maher show, but we can do that if you like, um, <laughs> uh, is that most of the people that, you know, espouse patriotism beyond reproach. I'm, you know, I love this country. Super, they couldn't quote you, you know, anything from the constitution accurately or from the Bill of Rights or, you know, to tell well, you. Yes, they can. They, they, they'll, they'll quote you the second amendment all day long. No, they won't. <laughs> Here's the thing, Kenny. Kenny, they won't. Because they do not know that it says a well, you know, a um, a well. They they know it; they just ignore it. Well, then then that's the that's the problem. (laughs) Yeah, they're they're doing the abridged version and they're (laughs) extrapolating (laughs) the abridged version of the Constitution. Oh yeah, yeah. They they carry it around in their pocket, and literally some some of it's redacted. But but okay, that that is right. There's that is you know that that aside. I I I don't I don't want to go too far into the political stuff. But Gina Carano's expressing of her political views, whatever they are. She knew that when she signed the contract with Disney, the biggest machine on the planet, and they're saying, hey, family, <laughs> we, want, we want people to like us. Quit complaining about your political views online. And she says, well, no, freedom of speech. And they said, okay, freedom to fire. And they did it. And, and she is now gone. And her career, I hate to say it, is not coming back because unlike Mel Gibson, who actually was talented and a horrible person, she's just a horrible person. I'm sorry, I'm saying it. Uh, you know, she she's not going to come back based on her sk- scary talent. I, I just don't believe that's going to happen. And I'm sorry, Gina, I was pulling for you, but Logan told me not to, so I'm not going to. No, all I'll say for that is that growth does take time. So as Disney even put in theirs, she is not employed and and there are no current plans to employ, but, and just because, you know, to give everybody the benefit of the human doubt, people can grow and people can change and everybody likes a good comeback story. And, you know, they're, I mean, whatever you want to call it, whether you're, you know, whether it's just, you know, violating of the contract or cancel culture or anything in between, um, there's something to learn from that. And learning and growth is the most important thing. And it's hard to watch and probably even incomparably harder to take when it's playing out on the, um, in front of millions of people on the worldwide stage. Um, But, change and growth and understanding and and sometimes you really gotta you know get hit to understand how to how to how to change so i i 100 percent agree i would add to that that the first step to change is to actually admit that there's something to change and i'm not going to draw any direct comparisons but um she has not acknowledged that she did anything wrong she is still saying that she was persecuted. So if you're saying that, uh, again, you're right and they're wrong and you get fired, wh- where's the change? I mean, even Mel Gibson did a apology <laughs> for what he said. Gina Carano has not apologized for anything. She's just double- and, and I would argue Mel Gibson's apology was probably faker than, than anything else. And yes, some of his name recognition and acting is what has allowed him to kind of steamroll through that and and still have a career. Um, back in November, I mean, you know, after the, the initial incident, you know, she did kind of post and, and talk about how, you know, Pedro um, actually came, you know, apparently talked with her and, and helped understand, you know, 
why she said what she said was as offensive as it was and that you know she you know said the right things after that was that fake was that real was that just understanding a specific incident not the overall mindset of you know whatever else she may believe uh, who knows i don't know her i'm not you know involved in any of that um but you know you can certainly always hope that um hope for the best and and, and to that point i i want to kick it to, uh, over to kenny but i I, I, I and, and again, I love a comeback story. I love redemption. Um, and yes, Mel Gibson's uh, you know apology was faker than a three dollar bill. I would simply say this is that, and and I touched on it before how because um, we were talking during the Shia LaBeouf segment um, a, a couple episodes ago where people are more inclined to accept your contrition if you're if the damage you were doing was to yourself or if you were, you know, contrite and, you know, it looked real. I mean, Mel Gibson's career will never be what it once was, but the talent remained. And, 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 and again, if he was not talented, I mean, they're not, they're not hiring him because he's that young baby fat Mel from the Mad Max days. He actually has a record to stand on. Gina Carano has Haywire, which was, and Deadpool. <laughs> it was a Sodenberg film. Don't get me wrong, but uh, you know, it, it was what you would expect from an MMA fighter's first time in, in movies. And, and, and again, the fact that she has not apologized and, and I, and I, I, to be fair, I don't know the, um, the breadth of what happened between her first encounter and this, obviously so, something didn't take, but uh, I remember also Pedro Pascal was supporting her or, you know, without endorsing, but still, you know, I stand by her or whatever. And I get that. And that's exactly what a well, the show should do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he also helped coach her on some of the very specific things that mm-hmm. he had a personal connection to, and I think it at least helped her understand his side. But then she still went and did this and got fired. So yeah, mm-hmm. and 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 I think that personal connection has got to be key too, because that one, you know, that that individual incident may very well have stuck with her because he had that personal one. But a person shouldn't need a a personal touch to every of the things that you know you can talk about that way in order to understand it you should be able to have more empathy than than that i logan you hit the nail on the head to bring back an old um cliche uh the 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 skill of understanding how other people feel is hard to teach that should be like a default Mm. like uh i'm hurting people Oh, but again, um, I think, like I mentioned before, you know, there's there's been a culture of them, us, them, us. So if you're feeling persecuted, all you see is enemies and they're trying to hurt you and you want to hurt them back. There's no, uh, there's no um, trying to understand or listen because everything is just, you know, uh, uh, aggression. And I think because she was friends with Pedro Pascal, she saw beyond that and actually saw the humanity in him. But again, like you're saying, you can't have everybody on the planet literally yeah. saying, hey, I'm a person too. Mm-hmm. And, and because she's not processing that, yes, yeah, she can make statements like she did, um, you know, referencing World War II in probably one of the most ignorant ways possible. And uh, and again, that shows just ignorance and a, a desire to categorize a group of people that she saw as mean or bad in one of the worst ways possible. It's just, it, it was ignorant and um, uh, just, a, a, it, it was ill, Ill thought out, it, it, you know, cause again, you can say, I don't feel like um, people are allowing me to talk in this new woke world, that's fine. But to take it that extra step and say, yeah, they're like Nazis. And my, you know, and you're just like, why would you do that? Why would, why would, why would you, why, you know, think about the ramifications of that? Because how people, like a wise man once told me, it's not what you say, it's what people hear. Yeah. And 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 there's a disconnect there, I believe. So I was going to add. Um, on the opposite side of this is. 
I keep mentioning how we we as a society we are elevating our celebrities, athletes, you know, our government officials, all these people that we we look up to, we elevate them to almost like a deity status where they have to be perfect. And as soon as they they show a flaw, then we're done with them, throw them away. They they never get an opportunity to be better right it's like you had you had one chance and that's it and you've shown your your true colors so now we're completely done with you you never get another chance and to me like i just i don't like that stance like i am all for you know i definitely agree like disney did the right thing um but at the same time if she makes amends and she grows and, yeah. and yeah, if no the keyword is always if, mm-hmm. right. But just like, you know, anytime somebody does something wrong, just, just like if, if somebody commits a crime and they go to prison, but they go through rehabilitation and rejoin society as a productive member and they make that, you know, they make that, that, that growth, we should accept them, right? Just because they did something wrong or bad in the past, if they've learned from it and they've grown from it and now they're a better person, why why would you not accept them, right? Well, and, and I, I 100% agree. I, I do think that, you know, Logan was talking about, you know, the comeback story and how, uh, and, and I made reference to Robert Downey Jr. who did something bad and is, you know, for a moment, I think maybe still is the highest paid actor, you know, not after... Dr. Doolittle, uh, you know, excluded, you know, one of the, the highest paid actors because we we accepted him. I I think because Mel Gibson said the words, he's still allowed back into Hollywood land. And I, I can even give you an example of Gary Oldman said something that was not too uh, forgiving, but apologized. And again, I do, I do believe, I do believe that um, what I, we, we try to forgive but there has to be that, the onus has to be on them to make that first move. But what I, what I would say to our, our listeners and our viewers is think about that, think about those things and, and remember that everybody's human. We're allowed to make mistakes, but give people the opportunity to, to grow and become better. Don't automatically reject the idea that that people can't be better. Absolutely, no, no, no. Perfectly stated. And you know, everybody should be given the opportunity to be their best selves. And let's just hope they take that opportunity. Yeah.